and I started looking at the website. Someone had already put his speech title, and he's a backup speaker. speaker. He put in all this information, and I go, wow, Charlie is ready to do too. And I'm like, NASCAR? All I could think of was Danica Patrick and <laughs> <laughs> NASCAR. But it's an amazing sport. I'd like to welcome you here for speech number two. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. I want to talk a little bit about NASCAR, the National Association of Stock Car Racing. It's a truly an American sport. It originated in the U.S. In the 30s, there was something called prohibition. You were not allowed to, to buy alcohol. You could make some alcohol for your own use, a little bit of beer, but alcohol as itself was not available anywhere in the U.S. It brought about something called bootleggers. People who made alcohol, pretty much straight grain alcohol, and sold it. It was illegal. So the distribution arm for the bootleggers was to drive it in their own cars, in their trunks, and make deliveries. Well, the revenueers, or IRS, the government, wanted to get that off the road. They didn't want anybody to to uh, develop any kind of distribution system. So the bootleggers had to, to get really fast cars so that they could outrun the police. Okay. They continued to get faster and faster cars. There was a TV show on in the 60s or 70s uh, called The Dukes of Hazard. You know, it kind of showed what a bootlegger did, uh, something called Daisy Dukes, some people might know what that is. There was somebody on the show named Daisy Duke, and she wore short, short shorts, Daisy Dukes. And they also had a fast car called General Lee. That was just kind of an example of what the bootleggers had to do to distribute their alcohol. Uh, there is also a very well-known NASCAR driver, owner, called Junior Johnson, he was just inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. He was an admitted bootlegger. He was caught and convicted and was sentenced for two years in jail, federal penitentiary, for bootlegging. Ronald Reagan, in 1986, gave him a full pardon and gave him his rights back, but he was in the first class of the Hall of Fame for NASCAR, a convicted, a bit of convicted bootlegger, and a very good race car driver and owner. More, a little bit more about NASCAR. In the 40s, there was a lot of racing going on in Daytona Beach. There always was high speed racing on Daytona Beach because it's a very, very hard surface. This is before the salt flats of Ohio, of Utah, came about. But they were very, very fast, and they had races that sometimes would run two, three, four miles on the beach and off of the beach. The problem with that, a lot of the promoters of the races got fees and ticket monies, put it in their pocket, and by the time the race was over to give the purses out, they were gone. <laughs> so a man named Bill France organized a group of different races in different places, and that family still owns, privately owns NASCAR and they run races across the U.S. I attended my first road racing, which a lot of people refer to as left turn, left turn, left turn, left turn, because it's constantly going in circles. Uh, but I, I, I saw my first one in 1954 with my mother. My mother was pregnant with my little brother, 1954. I ended up having another friend when I was in high school, who enjoyed working on cars, so he wanted to race. I became his mechanic. In 1968, I, I was licensed by NASCAR as a mechanic. You know, it was very unusual because I was only 17, but I had to have my driver's license before I could become a mechanic. So I saw a number of NASCAR races during the late 60s. I went to college in 1969. 
1970, I went to the Daytona 500, which at that time had grown a very huge speedway with over 100,000 people wow. could, could attend in, in there. And it's still running it. Twice a year they race up in Daytona. I went there from Houston. I went to the University of Houston. I had to, I and four other people went in a VW Bug from Houston <laughs> to Daytona. I was probably one of the smallest people in that, that bug. <laughs> <laughs> I went for, for twenty dollars out of my pocket. I had food, beer, entrance into the Daytona 500, and a program for twenty bucks. Yeah, I didn't have any place to sleep other than underneath or close to underneath the VW because it was so cold in Florida. It does get cold sometimes in Daytona, and it would hit freezing, and we didn't have blankets or pillows or anything like that. But I attended a major, major. You know, Daytona 500 race in 1970. A lot of people, not just Americans, watch motorsports. We have the Homestead Miami Speedway just 20 miles south of here, and every year NASCAR comes, and it's traditional now, the last race of the year, which sometimes determines a champion for the whole year round, is determined at Homestead Miami Speedway. They race 36 major races across the U.S. in 39 weeks. That's a long, long season. Wow. You know, they have three weeks off in between, but they race 36 weeks. Motor uh, in the U.S., NASCAR racing is very, very popular. It's the second most watched sport in the U.S. after the NFL. So it is a very, very popular, and it's not just an American sport. There is a driver, Juan Pablo Montoya, who comes from Colombia. There are Scottish, Dario Frank Kesey, who is Scottish with an Italian name. So it is an American started sport, but it is an international sport. And yes, Danica Patrick. Is racing in NASCAR. In NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people remember. So that's just a little bit about NASCAR, and I appreciate your time.